What's up, Mushroom Fam? It's Gary with Fresh From The Farm Fungi. I'm here in Denver, Colorado, and today I wanted to answer an age-old question of debate, and that is, what has the more potency, a fruiting body, dual extract, or myceliated rice? So there's a few different types of products that are out on the market for mushrooms, and there's a big debate on whether or not certain types of mushroom products contain more concentration of specific types of compounds. So I found a lab in Oregon and I'm going to submit samples of our last batch of freeze-dried cordyceps mushrooms. So these contain a compound called cordycepin, which is a stimulant and it's related or it's not related but it's similar structure to adenosine which is the energy molecule so your mitochondrion utilize that molecule to perform metabolism and in your body if you consume cordyceps you will consume a certain amount of cordycepin which helps to upregulate that adp and it gives you more energy so that's the idea behind cordyceps mushrooms if you haven't seen my video, I'll post my process in the description below for how I create my dual extracts. So I took alcohol and I soaked the, the fruiting body with the mycelium and the fresh fruits that I had just harvested to make my first ever batch of tincture. So it's been about 14 months now, um, two months for the extraction process, and now I have almost finished I've almost completed my safety testing my third-party safety testing I had it tested for a year of shelf stability and I had it tested for heavy metals and anything that is considered a contaminant in a food product so all that has come out clean and the last step that I wanted to do was to get some sort of clarification on whether or not to use mycelium or fruiting bodies in the future and I'm trying to make the best product possible so that means to have transparency so I'm going to submit my dual extract which contains cordyceps lion's mane and reishi mushrooms and I chose those for a reason that I, I won't talk about right now but I believe that the cordyceps helps to provide the energy side of my dual extract tincture. I will package up these samples, ship them off to the third party lab, and go over uh, the results. I'm super excited for this experiment. I haven't had a chance to find a lab, so I'm excited that this lab is out there. It's called Flourish Labs out in Oregon, so shout out to them. I know that this is probably bring them some business, and my hopes is to get my own HPLC set up here at some point, but it doesn't matter because third-party testing is a less biased opinion, and that's the way science goes. All right, I'm gonna package up these uh, freeze-dried cordyceps, our dual extract, and some myceliated rice. And we'll have all that tested, and we'll get some results to squash the debate for what has the most concentrated cordycepin. Is it freeze-dried fruiting bodies, dual extracts, or myceliated rice? All right, guys, so I've got my samples ready. Um, so we're gonna be submitting the freeze-dried cordyceps, and then we've got some myceliated rice which is also freeze-dried um, you can see it's got some orange hue to it so hopefully there's some cordycepin in there and we can answer that age-old question what has more cordycepin the mycelium or the fruiting bodies and then I've also got our dual extract tincture that I'm going to be submitting in for testing as well and then here is our sample submission form so i'll be sending these out today and i'll let you know when those results come in our email that they sent said seven to ten days so we'll release this as soon as we get those results out 
and I look forward to sharing these results and any other type of testing that we do in the future. All right, guys, much love. What's up, everyone? So the results for the cordyceps testing are in, and we got some really interesting data. Um, this is one of the reasons why I really love science, and there's a lot of information to cover through this, but I wanna give a big shout out to Flourish Labs. They just opened their new facility, and I believe we were the first or one of the first paid customers for this new lab. So that means a lot to us. We're really trying to bring light on this topic of mushroom extracts, mushroom concentrates, and just all the supplement products that are coming out on the market. I'm trying to put, provide the best possible mushroom products. And by testing, I believe that we're moving the needle in that direction. I'll go through these different results and I'll, I'll kind of put a, a picture of the results that they sent me on the side of the screen here so everyone can kind of follow along. So the first sample that we submitted was the freeze-dried fruiting body and that one tested in at 0 0.107 cordycepin, um, 0 0.083 adenosine, and 0.1322 deoxyadenosine. So one of the cool things about starting with to test with this new lab was that they were running all these new standards and they decided to throw in these two extra compounds, adenosine and two deoxyadenosine as well for free. So thanks again. Um, it was kind of interesting to see the different concentrations of that. The really cool result on this potency report is the next sample which is the freeze-dried mycelium and the percent by dry weight of that sample was 0.43. So compared to the cordycepin of the freeze-dried fruiting body which was 0.107 it was four times the potency for the mycelium. So that squashes a lot of the debate out there. Um, I was actually very surprised to see that. And um, following the rest of the results, the adenosine and the 2-deoxyadenosine were both below the limit of detection. So what does that tell me? Um, I'm presuming that as the mushrooms develop, they actually start to produce these other compounds that maybe they're derived from cordycepin or maybe as the mushroom grows the concentration of that cordycepin is less just because there's other organic matter and other tissue that's forming so that's really interesting so the cordycepin from the the mycelium was four times as potent as the cordycepin on that freeze-dried fruiting body which definitely blows my mind so now I'll go down to the last sample that we um, submitted, which was our dual extract, which is 50% alcohol extract and 50% water extract. And now this was also very eye-opening. So the level of cordycepin from our sample was 0 0.018, which is a tenth of the fruiting body. So that is the opposite direction of what we were trying to accomplish. Um, however, there was some adenosine at 0.016% and then um, there was some 2-deoxyadenosine at 0.013 and it's actually milligrams per milliliter because it, it's a fluid. Um, so they changed the, the uh, concentration from percent of dry weight to milligram per milliliter but it's almost the same thing. So that being said, um, I'm going to go back to the drawing board and come up with a better process for doing our extract. So I have a video about our dual extract. The cordycepin is present, but not really at the concentrations that we were hoping for. I think that in the future, in my next run, I'm going to be grinding down that mycelium cake with the fruiting bodies. 
I think that by doing that, it will allow that alcohol to penetrate more of the tissue and then therefore extract it. There's also a few extraction machines that are on the market that I might be looking into to try and raise these levels. So this is the baseline, our very first scientific potency report on our cordyceps. And another exciting thing about this is that now that I know the baseline of the cordyceps from the freeze-dried fruiting body, I can breed my cordyceps based on concentration of cordycepin rather than just the phenotypical expression and the form of the fruiting body. So this is a lot of valuable information. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. This is one of my favorite ones so far. And like I said, this is the reason why I love science because it puts an end to all this debate. Um, take it with a grain of salt. This is the first sample that I ever submitted. However, they gave me a really nice analysis. After the samples, they did give me the results of the controls, which is really important. If you're sending in a test, you wanna see how well did their control samples or their standards perform. So they did the cordycepin standard. It tested at 42.88 nanograms per microliter, which is very precise. Um, the expected value was 50%, so recovery 85.76%. What does that tell me? So that kind of shows that there is a little bit of cordycepin loss in the process, so our actual numbers might be lower than expected, which is good news for me, but um, those numbers will kind of show the accuracy of the test. So adenosine was at 99.34%, that's more accurate and then 2-deoxyadenosine was at 91.86 percent accuracy which is pretty good as well all right guys subscribe if you're looking forward to more mycology videos like these um, give us a thumbs up comment below if you have any questions or comments about um, this potency report or our process in general for doing our mushroom extracts but this is very exciting. We've got a couple more months on our shelf stability and safety testing, so that gives me time to dial in the potency on our product. Stay tuned for this winter. I'll be dropping some of our new products, and we will be doing a lot more testing with Flourish Labs, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more mycology videos like these, and until next time, much love.